It's another type of graph. Um, also, again, pretty quick. Um, I shouldn't say they're super quick, but you know, not too involved. You can do them pretty quick by hand. Um, the dot plot, which is also used for quantitative data. So stem and leaf plots and dot plots are used for quantitative data. Um, and what you do, it's almost like a number line, uh, very similar. So you draw a number line um, and you draw relevant for your data. So we're using that same data of text messages. So remember our lowest data point was 16 and then our upper data point was 149. So you'll see that this number line here is from 15 to 150, right? So it includes all of that data point, but we're not including extra values on the end. So you start with this number line. And then what you do is you put a dot above the number line for each point. Um, and again, like the seven leaf plot, it's not difficult to do. You just have to be careful as you go through one point at a time. So for instance, and we're just kind of estimating here, notice that we're counting by fives in our number line. So one of our values was 16. So you can see they put a point right here where 16 would be. And then we had another data point that was 19. And they put a point right there where the 19 would be. We had another data point that was 20. So I'm just gonna kind of um, use, look at my original data for a second here. And then, so we put a data point at the 20. Now, things that are stacked means that the value occurs more than once. So for instance, in this kind of group right here, if you look, you're just a little bit beyond 25. If you go back to the data sets, we actually do see um, that we have two data points that are 26. So you have 26 and then 26. So we put those dots right on top um, when we have a repeat data point. And again, that kind of allows us to see almost like these little heights, right? So they're not as nicely grouped, we'll say, as the stem plot where we're grouping by a leading digit or digits. We're still doing more individual data points, but again, it does help us to see the pattern. So again, you can see most of our data is down here, right, below that 100 mark, and then you have just a few data points kind of spread out above 100. So we can see that, you know, if I was to make a quick assumption, I would say that most people send less than 100 texts. Um, messages, right? I really, if you look, most of the data is actually probably between like 20 and 80 here. Um, but, you know, most people are sending at least less than 100 text messages a day. So we can kind of quickly see the patterns and then also see a lot of our repeat values very quickly as well, using one dot um, for each value. Again, going up kind of a column there to see those repeat values. All right. And as I said here, so your book is saying the same thing. You can see that most entries occur between 20 and 80. So here's 20. Here's 80. Just looking, I can see that that's where most of the data is. That's where most of those dots are. Um, and only four people sent more than 100 text messages. So here's your 100. You can see that there's only one, two, three, four people or four data points that are above 100. Um, and also it shows that that 149 tends to look really unusual. So it is an, you know, an outlier uh, because it lies outside um, most but lies outside most data, right? So everybody else is kind of below there and this 149 is sort of way off by itself. Um, so that's something we call an outlier. It's a data point that again, seems outside the norm or outside what most of our other data is showing. So here's another example for quantitative data. So we also have charts for qualitative data. And again, these are just some. Um, bar, bar graphs can also be used for qualitative data as well. Um, and we'll see one of those examples next. So one type of chart or graph that we use a lot would be pie charts or circle um, graphs. And particularly we can use them for qualitative data. Um, I suppose you could use them for quantitative data too, but it, it tends to lend itself better for qualitative data. Um, and we typically use percentages here. So instead of just listing the raw values, which we do have in our chart or our pie chart or our circle graph, we use the percentages. So those relative frequencies instead. And there's a few things you need to know. So a pie chart is a circle that's divided into sectors that represent categories. And the area of each sector is proportional to the frequency of the category. So that means that it, the size should match with the percent. 
So in this example here, notice that the percent for those who have bachelors is 40, around 49%, which is about 50%, right? And 50% of 100% is half. So you're noticing that that segment there is almost half the size of the circle. So this is what we mean by proportional. When you have a circle graph, the total is always, always, always 100%. So your percent or your pie slices should be in line with how big the numbers are. If they're about 50%, then your pie slice should be about half the circle. Here, this pie slice is around 26%, which is around a quarter of 100%, right? A quarter of 100 would be 25. So you can see that's taking up about a quarter or a fourth of the circle. So your slices should be proportional with the size. Now, how can you find these percents? So we can find our percents uh, by just doing some simple math. So we already have the raw data that is broken down. So we have, these are the different degrees earned in 2014. Uh, they're in thousands. So here you have 1,003 associate degrees. Again, it's 1,003,000 ,003 associate degrees. So you're actually looking at a million there. Um, so when it's in thousands, it really means to tack on an extra three zeros, right? At multiply that number by a thousand. Um, and then you have your bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees as well. So you can always find your percent by taking the frequency and dividing it by the total, and then multiplying that by 100%. And that will give you this, you know, the percent for each of those segments. So for instance, First thing I have to do is to find the total there. So I'm just gonna get out my calculator. So I see that I have 1,003 plus 1870 plus 754 plus 178. And when I add those all up, I get 3,805. So for instance, to get this first relative frequency, what we're gonna take is the part the 1,003 and divide it by that 3,805. And what we get there is 0.2636. And you can see now that they rounded to just three decimal places. So they used um, here and then that six would bump up that three. So they're using about 0.264 for your relative frequency. We can find um, that percent by just multiplying that by 100%. And that's how they get the 26.4%. And it's the same thing for the other ones. Let me just do one more. So let's say for the bachelor's degree, I take whatever the number is for the bachelor's and then it's always the total on the bottom. So 3,805. I get about 0.49145, et cetera, 49145, et cetera. Again, they're rounding to three decimal places here. So when I use the next number of four, it's small. So that value is going to stay. I get 0.491. And if I want a percent instead of just the relative frequency, all I do is multiply that by 100. And that's how they get the 49.1%. So we can calculate our percentages um, just using some basic arithmetic. Now to find the slices is actually much more difficult. We tend to use technology to do that. So like something like Excel or, or a different um, program can do these for you by just providing the percentages. Um, you can do them. What you need to remember is that a circle has 360 degrees all together. So once you know your relative frequencies, you can multiply them by 360 to figure out what the angle should be. So if we take that 0 0.264 times 360 degrees, which is the total, then you get 95 degrees. If you take 0 0.491 times 360, you get 177 degrees and so on. And then you would need some sort of protractor or tool to make sure you're actually measuring the angles of those degrees correctly. Um, so again, it's very difficult to do by hand to make a pie chart. Typically, we use technology to do this for us um, because although we can find the angles, maybe you can approximately draw them. So some people can maybe be good at that, um, but it's difficult. You would need some like a protractor or something to do it by hand. So 
usually we go ahead and do this with our technology. Um, but we may need to find the relative frequencies first or those percentages first to tell technology how to draw segments, okay? Um, but your segments should be in the right proportion. So like I said, if you're around 50%, you should be at about half the circle. The circle is always 100%. So your proportion should make sense. Notice that, you know, 19.8% is smaller than 26.4%. So that green segment is smaller than the orange segment, right? They should be balanced. Um, and that's something to watch out for. A lot of people make mistakes like that when they're printing um, or they're making pie charts. So you want to make sure everything is in proportion, just like our bar graphs, everything is in proportion.